unable to record it. Good. All right, let's start our meeting. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is the Hyperledger Toronto Meetup Group's um, August event. Uh, we have a very uh, good topic for today and uh, excited to have our guests uh, speaker from Brazil, Diogenes uh, Firmiano. And um, the presentation will start momentarily. I'm just going to give you a, a brief uh, um, agenda what is going to happen today. Um, first of all, just wanted to encourage everyone, as uh, you did in the past, please um, follow us on the meetup.com um, website for any future events. Uh, we try to organize these type of presentations in every month. And uh, despite of COVID um, and this pandemic, we've been able to do a great job um, keeping at least one presentation uh, in each month so far. Um, and having that said, I'd like to just express my appreciation for Hyperledger and the Linux Foundation to um, allowing us and enabling us to hold these type of presentations and uh, workshops um, and using uh, Zoom uh, for facilitating such uh, meetings. And also, the um, I want to give a Thank you for um, my co-organizers who are, some of them are on this call, but some are uh, not who made this possible to, um, to the community. Um, in terms of agenda, we will have uh, Diogenes uh, Firmiano who is going to give a presentation. And after that, it will be about uh, 30 minutes-ish. And then uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, we will have a Q&A session. I encourage you to uh, hold your questions to the end. So uh, once he's done with the presentation, uh, enter your questions into the chat window, which will appear uh, on the right side and we will uh, go through them. And uh, <clears throat> I assume like a half an hour, uh, 20 minutes will be enough for the Q&A, um, unless uh, we decide to expand it. Um, and after the presentation and the Q&A, please stay with us because um, our um, peer organizer, Shebs uh, uh, Batcha, um, is with us and he will also, and his team, will also uh, give a short presentation about uh, a trusted space, which is a, com um, uh, which is a community platform. And um, the presentation will be very brief, like a couple of minutes. And after that, um, everyone who is available and able to be able to um, click on the link, which will be shared and continue the conversation or the networking on this uh, trusted space uh, platform. Um, and um, at that point, uh, the Zoom meeting will be concluded and um, you know, everybody will be free to uh, depart or move on to the Trusted Space uh, platform to check it out, test it, and uh, keep the conversation um, there. So, um, having that said, um, the only thing I have left here is to introduce or uh, speaker who is, as I mentioned, from Brazil. His name is uh, Diogenes Firmiano. He's graduated in computer science from the University of uh, Brasilia with an MBA in digital transformation. He not just studied there, but worked as a professor teaching more than 10 different courses in administration and technology. He is also an author of the Perfect Relationship Guidebook. Diogenes is uh, passionate about technology, innovation, and human, relation, human relations. He has close to 20 years of experience in information technology, and he's responsible for the business development in, and innovation at MBA Mobi, uh, which is a mobile solution development company. They are working on different projects uh, from start, uh, smartwatch, IoT, uh, blockchain, AI, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality as well. He believes in the importance of human skills, relationships to empower human beings and uh, combination of these skills with innovation and technology in order to improve people's quality of life, creating, and collaborative, creating a collaborative and sustainable economy. 
He gave speeches uh, in workshops and conferences in more than uh, 50 different events. So today's presentation will be about healthcare in a new world and how to connect blockchain and AI in healthcare. Without further ado, please welcome uh, Diogenes Firmiano. Diogenes, please take it over and go on. Thank you, Laszlo. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm going to share my screen. Just a second. Uh, first of all, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be talking here. Um, you know, we are on a very different world. I was talking on the Hyperledger Global Forum in March before pandemic and get uh, catch everybody. And now we are talking just a, a few months later on a very different world. Uh, and the, it's what we are talking about here is how we can address this new difficult the new challenges uh, using blockchain AI and other stuff. Uh, first I want to start with a, a assumption that is from the uh, World Health Organization that is health it is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Uh, we usually use to talk about health in the when we are sick and, uh, and not uh, always when we need to maintain our health uh, in order to to be a better person and to to get uh, uh, physical uh, functions uh, going good and nutrition and so on and we always talk in you know, healthcare when we are sick and on, on this pandemic world, we are seeing how it came with deep scars in our society. Um, here's some video from Brazil. We are on a very difficult situation here with more than uh, 2 million cases, 2 million and 500 cases here in Brazil at the moment, uh, more than 80,000 deaths and uh, we are keep growing on the, the, the scouts. We are the number two at the moment uh, in cases. So it's a very difficult situation for, her, for us here in Brazil. And uh, it's leaving scars in our society here. And uh, as uh, I think it's living on yours too. The first of all uh, of these scars is fear. Uh, we have here uh, gone on lockdown. Uh, we have uh, some tourism phobia here in Brazil um, and the uh, fear of events. I think we're going to pass this in all over the world. Uh, I, I've seen cases in Paris, New York, uh, London that uh, the, the local citizens are uh, afraid of tourists so we have a lot of big scars to to care at the moment and this new healthcare that everybody's talking uh, at the moment is going on a lot of buzzwords uh, a lot of people talk about telemedicine a lot of people talk about AI of digital anything digital blank and uh, remote and so on and uh, uh, personal, I, I, I don't think that this new healthcare is only about these words. Uh, I think we need to, to go in further and, and going deeper to understand what we need to do uh, and not only going on technology to, to help to address this stuff that we have and this scar that we have at the moment. First of all, uh, there is a study here in, uh, in Brazil that uh, for, especially for us here, uh, our population, we're going to be uh, around 20% uh, uh, over 60 
uh, in 2030. Uh, I think a lot of countries had gone to this situation. Uh, Europe had a, a very difficult time with COVID-19, uh, especially for these and the, the cost of treatments um, is going higher and higher when getting older. So uh, it's a very difficult uh, issue to add this to. And we have, uh, at the moment, an era of deep fake. Uh, and this deep fake, as we are seeing there on the, this, this Joker movie that is going on, the, on other movies, and they, they are putting the face of the Joker uh, on the night. And uh, it's going to be uh, more and more common, not only in the movies, but uh, in everything. I think uh, we have a, a lot of fake news in WhatsApp uh, and our, uh, our messengers, uh, apps, and so on. And we need to address this uh, era of the, the post-truth. So when uh, we talk about all this stuff, the first we need to to address how the healthcare could be rethink, how we can rethink healthcare uh, in a very big way. Uh, first, looking for citizens, for health information on citizens, surveillance and diagnosis, uh, how to connect patients, devices, clinics, laboratories, and hospitals, and how to empower the the healthcare professionals in order to to then to uh, to get uh, on the the patient needs and uh, i'm gonna just present you uh, a concept that is the five p's of medicine of the future first one we need to address medicine and healthcare as preventive we need to prevent uh, the event and not only uh, treat the, the disease and need to prevent it, uh, the disease from happening. We need to be proactive. We need to personalize. Uh, we need to be prescriptive. And we need to have partnership with the citizens uh, in order to, to get it done with healthcare and to others. Uh, all this healthcare uh, stuff that we need to address in the future. And as we're talking in partnership, the first concept that we are doing here in Brazil, uh, and there is very important for us, is the uh, concept of e-patient. And uh, as the, the, the patient uh, can be the CEO of his own health. And uh, we had a especially uh, difficult moment with coronavirus, and uh, we have addressed an app here in Brazil to fight, fight against COVID-19. Uh, at the moment, we are going on production with exposure notification. Uh, it just have been approved on Google and on Apple. Uh, and we are going to have contact tracing address on our app. So uh, uh, our app for coronavirus is going to address the, the contest tracing uh, in order to prevent the coronavirus. And uh, we need to address how the, the, the patient could be the, the, the center of the, the decisions and, and could treat his health as, a, as the most important thing that he want to, that he needs to address uh, in his life. So uh, besides the coronavirus app, we have a, a patient's app here too, that's called ConnectSUS, uh, that we address timeline, wearables, the, the COVID-19 stat results, observations, in order to put the information on patient's hand uh, and for him to, to be in control of his data. So he can do all the consent uh, from his data. He can uh, control what has been viewed from other practitioners and so on, and, and how we can handle this on the, the hand of the patient. Uh, 
itself. But the main question, the key to the new medicine, it's interoperability. Um, I think on United States, I have uh, talked with a lot of people in the United States, they have a lot of, a lot of silos there. Uh, uh, first, there are a lot of hostels that have their own information and they don't uh, exchange those information. Here in Brazil, we have, uh, we had uh, about 2,000 uh, electronic health records systems here. Uh, from all of the, the, the hostels and the primary uh, healthcare uh, agencies and so on. And uh, the first that we had to, to address is how we, we, how we can connect all these different silos into, the, into a, a very single data source that could address all the, the, the stuff and, and uh, give the power for the patient and for the, the protectors to have all the, the information in hand. I think the, this is the most important thing that, it, that need to be addressed for every country in the world uh, to think about the new medicine. And here in Brazil, we use it fire as a, our standard to exchange health information. And uh, we use it, uh, a lot of guidelines and patterns, uh, some interoperability standards as fire, some medical standards as Nomad, Daikon, Loink, uh, and uh, our architecture guidelines using uh, REST and JSON to exchange information uh, on fire. And we use it blockchain to connect the dots. And I, uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit more technical and how we, we use that. I think that everybody is here to learn how we, we can do it here in Brazil. And uh, blockchain was our structure to uh, go in on uh, federal, federalized data from, the, from now over the, the states from Brazil. We have 27 states here in Brazil, and uh, they are very difficult uh, to, to, to integrate in one way, as there are some, some states that are more wealthy, there are some states that are poorest, and uh, we have to address all this stuff. Uh, we have connected with the Minister of Health to, to address the situation of the poorest countries. We have some, some cloud uh, there is for for the the poorest country that is hosted by the Minister of Health. There is some 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 states that use their own structure and they are connected all with blockchain. And blockchain could uh, do for us three main stuff. The first one is to be trustworthy. The documents recorded on the network cannot be changed and the track remains intact. Uh, the author and the content are encrypted and accessible by the smart contract to ensure that GDP, GDPR rules are complied with. Uh, there is uh, just one point on GDPR that we are not doing here, uh, the right to be forgotten, but uh, in Brazilian laws, uh, when the, the, the information is on the, the network, they not they as well we, we as minister of health we need to to guarantee the continuous of care uh, the the data needs to be there and the patient do not have the right to be forgotten uh, from the timelines but we prepare we we just uh, use the timeline uh, with some information from the patient and uh, the document itself on a structure uh, that is called a private data connection that is distributed over the, the nodes on the network. And uh, as we're talking with distributed stuff, uh, health hackers are distributed along all network nodes, the state clouds, the health plans, and the large hospitals, and guarantee access and reliability of these information. Uh, this, this distribution, uh, address the, the, 
the, the documents are stored uh, on network nodes uh, uh, in a distributed way and the timeline is federalized and it's on the ledger uh, to the address. And the, the information yeah, is spread go to. This is important part. Uh, I gotta watch the, this next. Uh, this information Sorry. is recorded on the chain and allows all the process without the possibility of changing the Sorry, Agnes. Sorry. Uh, can I ask you everyone to mute the microphone because I hear uh, one noise from someone. I think it's uh, coming from David right now. Thank you. Sorry, the Ashina cell, please. Oh, great. Wonderful. So, all the information is trackable and recorded in the chain and allow uh, to be tracked uh, and without the possibility of changing the track log. So, uh, on fighting against fake, fake news or fake information and, and on frauds on, on uh, documents, uh, on healthcare documents, uh, we, are, uh, we have a, a trackable information on blockchain. And we are empowering practitioners with telemedicine, with interoperability, analysis of health data, privacy, new approach in hospitals, and so on. For that, we are using telemedicine, uh, remotely approaching patients and doctors, and not only, not only telemedicine, but uh, all the structs that can be used from the, the data from the patient that are stored on the timeline and uh, getting all this information from the from the, the doctors to to go on decisions uh, integrating with legacy api too uh, here in brazil we have some hospitals that use uh, uh, cda open air and other stuff and we are uh, going with plugin it on our structure, converting it to fire and uh, getting information to the doctors uh, on, a, on a summary. So uh, there is a pattern then in fire that is called fire IPS, the international patient summary, uh, that it's very difficult to address uh, when we don't have all the information. But as, as we are going on a blockchain network that has all the timeline that uh, has happened with the patient, uh, we can put it on a timeline for the doctors. So uh, when a doctor come in and enter uh, to, to know what has been done with this patient, uh, what encounters did he had, uh, what... Uh, are the, the, the drugs that he are going to take or that he has taken. And uh, uh, healthcare is more than just an encounter. Uh, the, the, the doctors need to be empower, empowered to, to, to address all the, the stuff. And on, not only uh, looking for the patient at the moment and uh, in an event, give all the solutions uh, for him. Uh, I think we, we have a, a culture from the, the healthcare world that uh, the doctor is the, the, the center of the decisions from healthcare. But uh, here we are just uh, getting those decisions uh, divided with the, those informations from the doctors, the information for the patient, uh, the information for everybody to, to, to get at us on healthcare and to give uh, all the decisions uh, in both hands. And plugging it on a new XM flow. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, especially for COVID-19, we are implementing on a, a new XM flow uh, that is uh, getting on the, on the blockchain network when somebody has a test and uh, test for COVID and uh, was a positive or negative, 
uh, the laboratory uh, is mandatory for them to send this information to to the blockchain network and uh, if those those uh, re uh, results are positive we are uh, getting these results uh, uh, putting information for uh, a decision uh, dashboard and this decision dashboard go to, to to have all the visual information from what is happening uh, in all, all over all over the, the country and what is getting worse and when we need to address uh, if uh, some hospital need some more beds and so on and what resources they need if they need more masks is then if they need beds if they need uh, someone uh, some drugs or some someone something else uh, all these address with this uh, new exam flow and always uh, going on blockchain and as we we have this data structure uh, in our in our database, we can then go and, and uh, can do uh, pre preventive medicine itself as information from smartwatches, from IoT. Uh, they are coming from the patient app to the uh, to the structure uh, and to the timeline for the patient. Uh, there are some information from the exams that are going and then when you have you, all this information from the, the patient timelines we can then go and use AI to maybe uh, do some risk analysis uh, we are at the moment doing risk analysis on um, uh, something that is from heart diseases uh, there is some drug recommendation system for the for the doctors too, the, and, and then we can analyze the timeline and, and compare all the patients and do preventive medicine and preventive management of public health too. Uh, with all this information, we can go on healthcare KPIs using IoT, uh, monitoring, epidemic management and proactive action. We have some, some applications that we have developed to the Ministry of Health uh, to control the, the notifications from COVID at the first moment, but we have some other diseases that are going to be controlled here too uh, in order to prevent and to, to get on a proactive action too. So when you talk about digital transformation, we in healthcare, we need to address uh, patient exams, laboratories, uh, EHRs, wearables. Everything must be connected, and blockchain go on this structure, uh, plug in the EHRs, the EMRs, uh, the personal health data, uh, Apple Watch, Galaxy Watch, Fitbit. Uh, the exams, diagnosis, images, equipment, uh, observations that came from the patient, from the practitioner, and uh, we are using uh, as uh, information uh, some profiles from fire, uh, some uh, like condition, encounter, procedure, observation, immunization, medication, exam, and so on, and we are connecting them on a graph database uh in order to to analyze the patient and how we can prevent some diseases on him so this is what we talk about intelligence uh, and uh, how increase the healthcare intelligence so we are building at the moment smart patient summary prognosis drug recommendation and other stuff using artificial intelligence uh, with this and just to uh, materialize to, to you our architecture. We are using our, uh, we have some apps for the patients and uh, there are some uh, PHR information from the smartwatches too, uh, some information from the practitioners and uh, 
we are plugged on EHR or EMR softwares from the hostels or for the, the primary care uh, units too. And all are using uh, some, some microservices to connect uh, with this. Uh, we are using a fire server to connect it and some fire converters too, uh, in order that all of the information that we're using are on fire. And then we uh, go in all this information on a black blockchain network. Uh, we have in, in the blockchain, uh, the patient as, a, as an asset and the timeline item as an asset too. And the fire document itself go on a private data con con uh, connection, collection. Uh, this private data collection address all the documents itself. Uh, there are big documents like some uh, image results, uh, for example, for an fMRI, for example. Uh, we have uh, information from the, the encounters itself, information from the observations and so on. And all this information are, are structured on blockchain. And the smart contract guarantees that uh, all the consent stuff is being done uh, uh, and the patient have given access to the information. Uh, all of this is connected with uh, digital certificates on the network. And when we plug a, an EHR on an EMR software, the, they need to be uh, using the digital uh, certificate to connect to the network. And those information that goes on blockchain uh, are anonymized to be used uh, in a data an analytics structure too. So uh, we, all this information that go uh, open for the blockchain uh, with uh, the information from the patient itself, it, go, uh, it goes to the data analytics structure in order to uh, connect with other healthcare data sets and other structures uh, from the, the ministry. And uh, we are using Spark to, to connect from, from this uh, information that goes on the landing zone. Uh, at the moment, we are using AWS as our main structure in, in Ministry of Health, but uh, there are some states that uh, are using some other uh, clouds and uh, all this stuff uh, is uh, complained with uh, Azure, with GCP, and with uh, Amazon too. And all stuff can be processed uh, on an AI engine. We are using Jupyter here uh, to, to analyze the, those information, to give our, our structure with uh, some uh, deep learning algorithms. And we are using uh, Spark Graph and HBase for our middle structure uh, in order to, to plug some APIs that can be used on, uh, on some products here, like uh, we have a, an open data structure, we have uh, some dashboards, some, some uh, uh, KPIs there are expose it on this, on this API too. Uh, here are some production numbers for our structure. We have uh, 2,000 TPS uh, in the AWS cloud. Uh, hey, yeah. There was a couple of questions on this slide, uh, on the previous slide. Um, I, I think people are asking some questions. So do you want to take them now or do you want to do it after the session? Yeah, sure. uh, I'm, fin I'm finishing the, the, the presentation, then we, we can go back and uh, uh, go in further and go in deeper okay. on, the, awesome. on the stuff, okay? Awesome, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, here are some production numbers here from our structure. We have 2,000 TPS uh, in the AWS cloud. Uh, we are using consensus raft with five nodes and two channels, and we have 230 uh, million patients on our structure at the moment. Uh, two years from timeline from the patients to the moment, we are expecting to go in on 5 billion uh, records uh, for 
for a year. For uh, I think we maybe in five years we're going to have a uh, around uh, 30 billion records on the network. And uh, all of this, uh, we we need to address the the dealing with privacy and GDPR and how to connect AI with that. So we are using blockchain uh, as our structure to guarantee uh, that the smart contract uh, is going to have all this consent stuff. And uh, we have this anonymizer to, to go in on analysis uh, with data uh, and in order to, to be compliant with GDPR too. And if the patient uh, give access to, uh, to consent, we put all his information in a graph, uh, in a graph database, in order to have it analyzed. But uh, then the, the, the patient gave a consent to, to have it uh, analyzed in a further way, maybe uh, calculating his uh, heart, heart disease uh, risk uh, uh, and, and so on. But uh, when we talk about uh, uh, consent, the first thing we need to know is everything is about engagement. How we can connect with patients, how we can go with him to, to be the CEO of his own health and how to give, uh, give a lifelong care, better nutrition, exercise, mental health. And the doctor, uh, in this, in this uh, play a role of a healthcare manager. Uh, the healthcare is divided uh, the responsibility for the engagement from the, the patient and with a doctor uh, conducting and facilitating the, the healthcare and, and getting it better for the patient too. So when I talk about the post-pandemic world, uh, the, the question that everybody asks is, are we ready? And I think uh, when we need to be addressing this question, we need to talk about AI, but we need to talk about GDPR and engagement. We need to talk about IoT and wearables, but we need to talk about nutrition, how we can connect all the stuff. We need to talk about biotech, but we need to talk about exercises too. And we need to talk about genetics but we need to talk about mental health. Uh, it's not only technology. We need to engage the patients and we, we need to, to go in further. And then when Albert de Grey talks, maybe we can uh, reach the longevity escape velocity. I don't think, I don't know if anybody is, is familiar with this concept, but uh, what, what he talks about is that if we can maintain our health in a, in a good way, uh, maybe we can uh, reach the longevity escape velocity and maybe we can live longer and longer and longer and maybe uh, till the time that we want to live. And it's all about health maintenance, uh, just like a car. Uh, we have to, to do prognosis, we have to do pre prevention, we need to... to and manage our health, and we need uh, an active patient. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk a, a little bit, but uh, I think we'll have questions about uh, a lot of stuff uh, since now from then. And then I, I leave it this space for us to, to, to ask some questions and, and to get, go on deeper. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you so much, Diogenes. Um, I think this uh, presentation, not just a presentation, the, the work, what you've been done is uh, really amazing. Um, I have a list of questions here, but uh, let's start with uh, some which came from the, uh, from the audience. And um, yeah, one of the question was regarding the database. Uh, will that be a multilingual database? can you hear me? No, I, I couldn't hear you. Okay, sorry. So I was just reading out uh, one of the questions from the audience, which was, is the uh -huh. data... 
is the database going to be uh, multilingual? Yeah, at the moment, we are not going on multilingual, but uh, as we are going on FHIR as our structure, all of that uh, is coded on, on FHIR structure as we are going using uh, the code system and the value sets from FHIR uh, using LOINC and Snowman City. And then uh, does not need to be multilingual, and uh, when it's saved on the on our database, uh, maybe when somebody connects it, uh, we can translate uh, on the terminology. That is how it works. Okay, um, Shabs, can you please mute your microphone? It, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we had some uh, background noise on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, the next, next question was, whoever you mentioned about, um, you, you talked about the infrastructure and that you are using uh, AWS, and I think you also mentioned Azure, but uh, maybe the, um, the, the person who raised the question liked to uh, get this answer, that is the Hyperledger blockchain uh, private or based on the um, IBM uh, version? I think, uh, what he's trying to ask is um, if you are using the I IBM implementation of the Hyperledger or it was uh, something different. No, we are using the open source uh, Hyperledger fabric. It was the version 1.4.2 at the moment, but we are already planning to go into 2.0. Uh, at the moment that we are developing, uh, the 2.0 was not in production and we is not on general available, uh, it was on beta. And then uh, uh, we get in, in production with that. And then we are now planning as we have already uh, records on the blockchain, uh, we need to plan it very carefully to going on a update. I see, and I agree. Actually, I also have a question regarding the, the infrastructure. Um, before I go on with the next question from the audience is, is regarding the governance, like um, what you presented is a very, um, you know, comprehensive uh, architecture and very detailed, a um, lot of uh, com components, you mentioned multiple uh, nodes. Uh, and my question is um, how the governance work on the, on the network, like who decides uh, what are the rules to change any aspect of uh, the network, the architecture, and also the network network rules? Oh, uh, as we are doing this project with the Minister of Health here in Brazil, uh, is uh, the network is permissioned, so uh, states may come in, but uh, uh, the the Minister of Health need to approve. Uh, for them to enter, uh, and uh, we in our Minister of Health we have a, an architecture group that I lead there, uh, and this group uh, in this group we talk about uh, everything that we are going to go. Uh, it's like a, a change group uh, 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 to 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 control what's going to enter what's going to be implemented on the smart contract, what are the new rules, and uh, there is a very uh, facilitated way to, to go in production that when we go and, and agree that everybody uh, agrees uh, uh, something that is going to be updated on production, and when we updated the, the smart contract, all the, the network nodes need to update, so uh, we, we can address all the those secure stuff or uh, all the those things about GDPR that we may need, and uh, as the, the 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 smart contract is in control uh, and we we control it, the the, the changes we can control uh, how we can use it and so on. And how are you dealing with the cybersecurity? You mentioned that you know government has a team of architects. Uh, engineers on the project. Um, how are you um, taking care of the cybersecurity aspect of the information and the network? Uh, that is a very interesting question because um, 
as we have a, an architecture group, we uh, too have a security group. And this security group, uh, we address a lot of questions like uh, if there are some breaches, uh, and other stuff that uh, can be controlled. As we have a, a lot of uh, people that are connected on the network, we have established some steps in order to get on the on the blockchain. Uh, we have first to to enter. You need to get a, a digital certificate to send a, an information to the EHR services. That is on a microservice. Uh, there are published on the, the internet, and then uh, with this information, they go on a on a different part of the architecture. That is a queue, and this queue uh, controls if the 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 requests are going are okay or are not okay. And then from inside, we have a, a DMZ that is structured uh, on on the other part. Uh, that gets the information from the queue and then puts the information on the blockchain. There, nobody is allowed to put information directly on blockchain. So we, we have some steps and some, some layers to control uh, if the information is going to be on the, the blockchain uh, or not. Uh, and just to, to, uh, to uh, get some questions here, the database is CouchDB. As we need to get some uh, queries using JSON, we have used the we have tested a couch a couch and level DB. We have tested both, and uh, besides, we have a little bit uh, faster uh, results on the level DB. We have some tweaks on couch that we couldn't have the 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 numbers that we had on on, on production. Okay. So, and as you mentioned, this is a, a production implementation, right? Uh, the Azure. Yeah. Okay. And how, diff how difficult did you find to, to onboard these different organizations, uh, healthcare companies, um, hospitals, and the government itself to be, you know, to play an active role and enroll into this platform? Mm -hmm. uh, when the project came to us, uh, uh, we had uh, developed the, the app for the patients, and then they came in with the, uh, a need in how to address interoperability on the stuff, and they had a, uh, an idea, and then we go in on, on desk research, how we could do it, and what our what were what we were doing in the world, and we didn't see a lot of a lot of cases using blockchain. But uh, we had some studies uh, that we saw that was very good for us to 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 going on our on the base for our project. So we get a, on a proof of concept. Uh, this proof of concept uh, we use it at the moment. Uh, Hyperledger Fabric, but uh, on a version 1.2 when mm -hmm. we started the project, and then uh, the, pro the the we I get a example from London. They they had used it yet, and then we go in on this proof of concept. They like it, and then um, uh, as we we are talking about the the Minister of Health, they have the power to enforce how everybody is going to use it and so on. So uh, when they, they, they said, oh, it's gonna be on production and everybody need to send the information, they put a law and this law need to be followed by all the hospitals, all the labs so, and so on. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more it's easy for mandatory. us. Yeah, it's yes. mandatory in the government. Um, you know, help with the um, governing power, so to say. I yes, think. yes. And um, how long did it take from the beginning uh, to the implementation or by the time you got to production with this? Uh, it take about a year. A year. That's yeah. not, uh, not even bad. Like one year is, is, is like a very feasible or 
But yeah, J just to have an example, uh, the proof of concept I presented then uh, on July last year, July 12, uh, 2019. I see. That's, that's where, when I presented them the, the proof of concept and then we going on production in before pandemic, it was maybe February mm -hmm. or in, in March. Yeah. Uh, it was just, uh, I think uh, on the end of February, uh, it was on production. Mm -hmm. And then when we had uh, all the pandemic stuff, uh, going on a boom. We, yeah. we are planning to use only in one state, uh, going one step. Yeah, running slowly. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when it is going to, uh, now we have a pandemic, we have a blockchain network here, we are going to plug all the 20 steps, 27 states, we are going to plug all the laboratories and let's go there. So okay. <laughs> we yeah. needed to address all the, the, this, this stuff at the moment it was very crazy, but we are now in production and in yeah. going. And you, mentioned, you, you mentioned the, the capacity and 2,000 uh, transaction per second. Is it the current uh, bandwidth or is it the theoretic uh, capacity? Uh, at the moment, we, we are going with 1,000 uh, uh, TPS at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as we have um, a lot of tests that are getting from the, the, the COVID-19, we have uh, uh, raised our, our uh, structure to, to address all this stuff at the moment. But uh, the top that we had at the moment was 2000 TPS. Uh, but uh, we have tweaked the, the architecture and the infrastructure at the moment. I think we, if we need to go on our stress test, maybe we can go in... Uh, on a higher number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, would have been my, my next question, that how easy to, you know, scalability is always a question in terms of a blockchain mm -hmm. networks, and um, that became many times the barrier for implementing different um, public blockchain uh, technology for different use cases. And I think one of the great benefit for uh, um, using a private blockchain and especially a hyperledger because um, it's more, I mean, according to me, don't guys uh, don't take it uh, granted, but uh, according to me, it's more um, scalable. Um, according to your knowledge, um, how, how much could you able to scale up the infrastructure? What would be the maximum uh, transaction per second, what you could uh, facilitate? Uh, we have discussed it a lot in our architecture mm -hmm. group, group and uh, something that we mentioned for, uh, for everybody is that we can use some more channels to address uh, scalability and uh, as we use it, two channels, one channel is for, is for timeline, the other channel is for consent and log stuff and, and maybe if we have some more services for the network we can uh, handle this on other channels. And something that we have others too uh, is to, to have uh, more nodes for one state. Uh, Sao Paulo, for example, there is a biggest state here in Brazil. They have uh, at the moment two nodes and they, they are dividing the, the, the information from two nodes uh, as they are very big uh, as there are some states here in Brazil that are uh, very small and they don't ha they only have one. Um, this is how we we are handling at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's a very tricky question. We we need to to address uh, always tweaking, always looking for the the the, um, the network health and and going on. Uh, for, uh, on on not just uh, in production. Yeah, it's understandable. I think it's a, it's a continuous um, analysis and testing um, what can uh, give you more flexibility and the capacity. Um, yeah. The last two questions I have, one from the audience is that, um, are you planning to um, um, migrate all the historical data from previous um, health records, or patients' records, or is it just going to be the, uh, 
current state and onward? At the moment, we're on this project, uh, mm -hmm. on getting all the information from the other health records that the uh, Minister of Health had and to go in on, on the blockchain. And, and we are going to have uh, five years of timeline mm -hmm. in there. But it's, uh, we have to, to, to build some, some components like how to put uh, information in blockchain in bulk mode. So uh, it's a, a problem that we have when we, when we talk about uh, going on, on this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to address uh, how to get into, into bulk mode. Uh, into bulk mode, we have a, a case uh, with 10,000 uh, records in a second. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, here in Brazil, uh, we have about 5 billion records yeah. per year. And so it's very big and we need to address uh, all this stuff. We are paralyzing uh, how to put it on blockchain, but they have uh, blockchain his, has his own structure of consent and so on. And, and we don't yeah. have uh, any way to force it more than that. And how is it in Brazil? Because I think when it comes to patients' records and healthcare, uh, it's always a question um, that who owns the data? Like who the data or that patient's record belongs to? Is it owned by the government or is it by the patients? And what happens after five years? Will, will the data be you know, dumped to uh, like an external database where in case someone needs can have access to it? Um, or yeah, w w what happens after five years storing the data on the uh, blockchain? The, the information is for the patient, from the patient and to the patient. Uh, the, the Minister of Health only holds the information and put it on the network, but uh, the information that the patient can get it there and can uh, it control uh, if anybody uh, is going to see all this information, the patient can do it, the patient can control uh, all this consent stuff. Uh, maybe I can lock all my, all my information and nobody can see and, uh, and only can be controlled by me if uh, I go to a doctor, for example, and I saw, ah, no, you are gonna, I'm gonna uh, change for you to see only this information, only this exam, only this stuff. And the, the, in the patient app, he can control it. He can put it, uh, the, the control of visibility of his timeline. So even uh, patients can control whether the government uh, see what the records about his health status is stored. Yeah, and, and all the stuff that we have implemented is the log. The patient has uh, the right to access, access who is going to visit, uh, who is, is viewing his records at mm -hmm. the very moment that the, the, they access. So he can turn on the notification to say, ah, uh, Dr. Dr. Laszlo saw my, my documents at the moment and I, I wanted to lock it. For, for him not to see. And so we have a structure here to, to notify all the patients when the, this formation and this consent is already uh, stored on this blockchain uh, channel number two uh, mm -hmm. with, with all the, this information too. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you for the compliment. Doc I promise Dr. Laszlo will never have access to those uh, data. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't speak Portuguese. Uh, secondly, I have no idea about uh, medical records and how to read them. So, um, and what's um, a, a parting question before we go on to the next uh, uh, section of the, the meet, meeting today uh, for the uh, Trusted Space uh, presentation? Um, what's the current challenges for you as a, like uh, for the project and what's the next forward? Like what's the future for this project? Uh, at, at the moment, uh, we are addressing two big questions, two big issues. The first one is to going on more clinical documents on the network. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other one is to get uh, 
information from them and going on prognosis and so on using artificial intelligence. We have a structure uh, at the moment. Uh, we are using this anonymized information for everybody to go in on uh, political uh, stuff, uh, some uh, KPIs and so on. And uh, if the patient wants to give access and to have a, a deeper analysis on, on, his, on his timeline, he can go on to and go, uh, his information going on a graph. And then we put at a, some deep, uh, deep learning algorithms on this graph to analyze if we can uh, maybe get some prognosis from him. And this is what we are doing at the moment, are these two, uh, just two stuff. I see. All right, Diogenes, uh, once again, thank you so much for this very insightful presentation. I'm really happy to see that there are such as uh, production uh, implementations of the Hyperledger and serving a really good uh, purpose. And I think you are able to live up to your um, uh, passion and uh, what you believe in, as I uh, talked to you about, about your vision and what you believe in, um, helping mm -hmm. and improving uh, the quality of people's of lives. Um, so once again, thank you. I think it's a big applause for, um, for you and for the team who is uh, working on this project. And hopefully we will see that something similar in the future in Canada as well. So yeah, and there's a couple of um, um, thanks for um, the, the audience as well. Um, so having that said, guys, um, I'd like to encourage you to, um, to stay online because we are um, going to the next presentation, which will be a short introduction to uh, a social a community platform, which is called Trusted Space. And um, I'm not sure if it will be Shabs or... Um, yeah, so yeah, thanks, uh, Laszlo. I think... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, Diagenes, that was a very good presentation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, so guys, uh, we had a quick poll for the participants that you wanted to do some kind of online networking. So we have made a very short presentation to show you how we can achieve that using Trusted Space. Um, so Maggie, uh, we will go ahead with the presentation now. Can you start with the screen sharing? Sure, of course. So Trusted is a platform which allows you to collaborate with your community. And uh, we'll do a short, like a five minute presentation, which covers a, a quick introduction to the platform. And right after you, you will be able to connect and create your own profile. And that way you can network with all the people who are part of the Hyperledger community here, not just in Toronto, but also globally. Awesome. So, all right. So this is the presentation. Uh, so Trusted Space is a global collaboration platform specifically for the Hyperledger community. So these are some of the challenges we are trying to fix. So first is, um, you know, how do you find multiple events on a common calendar? Right now, there are so many events happening right in Washington, in Chicago, Hamilton, but uh, you are only able to see the ones in Toronto. So, you know, this is a challenge which Meetup does not solve for us mm -hmm. because you have to join specific communities to see these events. So, you know, they're not discoverable by different languages, you know, for Spanish language meetups, for, you know, French language meetups, English, uh, and also by tags. So that's the first challenge. Uh, the second one is after the meetup is completed, how do you share the presentation slides and documents? So again, uh, some of the options are to put them on Google Drive because Meetup does not support uh, uploading content. So, but the problem here is that uh, the data gets overridden and there's no tagging. So you cannot search by AI or blockchain or uh, Hyperledger fabric. So, you know, your content is kind of lost in the noise. The next challenge is how do we discover different tools, URLs and resources? Uh, so here we have the wiki page where we can upload content, but wiki is a, a, a format where everything needs to be edited in one page. So there's no way to add micro content, you know, where you can easily upvote or download certain content, give it a tag, put a comment on it. So those options are not uh, accessible in wiki. And the last uh, challenge is, you know, how do we connect to participants and presenters globally? So right now we are using Zoom. But Zoom is excellent for uh, live events. It doesn't really do the collaboration aspect. 
because you cannot connect across multiple communities based on your needs and asks. So essentially what is missing here is the community hub and that's where Trusted Space comes in. So I'll, I'll pass it to Maggie to kind of walk you through the solution. Yes, hi everyone. Um, so the solution we came up with was Trusted Space, which is the place to discover your community. And how does um, Trusted Space help you to discover your community? Um, oops. It, it allows you to connect based on, on interests and needs. Um, it also allows you to exchange knowledge, skills, and challenges. Uh, you can discover a unified calendar of events all in one place. And you can create uh, global groups with local admins within the, the Hyperledger space. And how does Trusted, uh, Trusted promote collaboration? Well, first it allows you to connect. You can connect by community, skills, and needs. Uh, it also allows you to discover, you can discover communities and resources. And it also has a calendar, a unified calendar where you can search all of your events in one place. So we'll do a little live demo of the platform. So this here is the, uh, the, main, uh, the main home screen for uh, Trusted. On the left-hand side, you can see all of the recent posts. These are ones that have been made public. You can also choose to just keep them within your space or community. Uh, you can sign in using social sign-in, or you can sign in using email sign-in. So we'll just go in through the email sign-in. And when you first come into the platform, you're taken to the home page. This is where you're going to see all of the latest posts. Um, now, browse is the, the, the main heart of the platform. This is where you go to find all of the posts within your space or within a specific community. I'll show you communities in a moment. So we have a number of different post types. We have information posts, which can be uh, PDFs, they can be PowerPoint slides, uh, article links, um, videos, any type of information that you'd like to share. Skills are skills that you have to share with the community or with the entire global Hyperledger space or skills that you're looking for, you can post either way. Um, as well as for information, you can post that I have this or I'm looking for this information. As well as events, this is um, a, a global calendar of events or you can narrow it down to your specific community. So we'll take a look here at um, an event uh, listing. So here you can see on the left-hand side, you have that it's an event type of post. You've got a, an image. Um, you can also choose to upvote the, the post if you like. Uh, you have the title, you have the, um, the date that the uh, event is happening, and you have some keywords that make it very easy for you to search um, using the search bar just across the top. And then you can uh, click in to see a little um, uh, description of the event, as well as any external links um, that you may need to link to. You can favorite posts, uh, you can flag them if you find them to be inappropriate, and you can also social share out the posts to your social networks. So we'll take here a look at the events calendar. Now this is a unified calendar of events. Um, this is where we make it very easy for you to search based on um, location, uh, based on community, as well as on certain keywords. So you can, if you were looking for, for example, more um, talks on healthcare, you can very easily find them uh, in your community or, or across the world globally. We have list view here where you can see all of your events um, and you can narrow it down by uh, a, a date selection. This is the list view, but we also have the calendar view. And here you can see some of the upcoming events. Um, and you can also uh, search simply by a keyword across the top, an event or an event that you're specifically looking for, or you can narrow it down by a specific community. So we'll take a quick look here at the communities. Now this is where, for example, you would have the different global uh, chapters that you have around the world. For example, you would have Hyperledger Toronto would be um, one of the communities in here. Uh, so we'll take a look at one of these pages, what they look like. So we'll take a look here at the Charlotte Hyperledger Meetup. You have the title, you have a, a description, some keywords to make it easily searchable. Um, and we'll click into the page. This is what you'll see. You'll see a banner image, a little logo um, on the left, a description about it, as well as who the members are, any posts that have been added by that community or any events that are specific to that community. It's very easy to invite people. You just click on event, uh, excuse me, invite, and you can send um, an email to uh, a, a person to invite them to the community. And you can also social share it out uh, to your social networks. Uh, next, we'll go here to connect. Now, this is the main place that you would go to connect with members of the global hyperledger space or with the, um, the members of your community. 
Um, you can search by a name if you know who you're looking for or by a certain skill set that you're looking for or that um, you'd like to offer to others. You can narrow it down by a specific community or you can narrow it down by skills. So you can match on uh, common interests. So you can connect with people who have common interests as you, uh, people who have the skills that they skills that uh, you need uh, that you're looking for who can help you or people who are looking for the skills that you have and you can help them. So let's say, for example, uh, my needs. Um, we can see here that Shabs has uh, three needs that I am looking for. You just click into his profile. You can see um, an, his email, his title, a little bit about him, some fun facts to break the ice. You can see the skills that Shabs has um, and the needs that he has. And so we can connect that way. If you wanted to connect to Shabs, all you would need to do is just, um, where did Shabs go? Is just uh, click on the, um, the chat bubbles. Uh, your email is already audio populated from your sign up. You can add a phone number if you like, as well as a brief comment and a connection request will be sent to Shabs via email and you can just communicate through email or phone number if you like. Um, the last feature I'll show you is we do have um, a language feature. So you can, you can uh, translate the entire platform to any of the languages that, that you're looking for. Um, so for example, Here we go. Uh, so we can translate it into any language that we're looking for. And the entire platform will be translated into the language of the user's choice. Great, thanks very much. I'll just hand it back over to Shabs and he's going to continue with the rest of the presentation. Awesome. All right. So thank you, Maggie. So the goal here is to not just have those siloed. Uh, thank, thank you, Guillermo. Uh, so the goal is not just to have those siloed uh, communities, but also to connect globally. So you can bring together the members, the speakers, all the multiple communities across the globe. We have more than 138 uh, uh, communities which are running Hyperledger meetups. So the content will now become more discoverable. You know, you can find the best speakers, find the best content across the globe. So that, that is our vision here, to be stronger together. You, know, you can find members, search for jobs, share events, and contribute knowledge to a global community. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Jaikar. Uh, so, so going back to the initial slide, so these were the initial challenges that we started with. So you know, we, we started, uh, uh, you know, the first challenge was, um, how do you find events on a common platform? So now that problem is solved with Trusted Space. It collaborates with Meetup. Uh, you know, all, the, all the data from Meetup gets cross-posted here. So it becomes discoverable by language and tags. Uh, then how do you share uh, the presentation slides? Again, that problem is now solved because uh, you can still upload your content to Google Drive, but now you can index them into Trusted Space with multiple tags. So it becomes easily searchable and, and upvotable and downloadable. Uh, the next one was, how do you discover uh, the best tools, URLs, and resources? So yes, you can still use Confluence to keep the content, but uh, allow the micro content to be upvoted and downloaded from Trusted. So it basically allows the crowdsourcing of information. You know, you can just add micro content, you know, any good URL you come across, you can post it here. And now it's discoverable across uh, different communities. And the last uh, challenge was, how do you connect the participants and presenters? So, uh, you know, this is the challenge that we are on right now. So we are in a forum, we have about 15, 20 members here and there was, everyone was trying to post their email addresses, but pretty much that will get lost as soon as the session ends. But this way by creating a profile, now you are, uh, you know, permanently kind of registered so that next time you don't have to keep putting your email and um, your uh, social sign in again and again right so and the cool feature is as maggie explained uh, you can put in your needs and ask and that way people can connect to you based on what skills you offer or what are your interests that you're looking to get awesome so yeah i mean that is a platform if you guys want um, the link was already posted on chat so if you are interested you can go ahead and create your profile and, and send each other connect request uh, as long as you fill out your skills and asks I mean, those are the important things to fill out when you create your profile. Uh, you know, you'll be able to then find yourself and find other members based on the matches. So thank you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. So we'll hang out for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, if you have any questions or... Um, yes, so yes, we will definitely upload the question. Uh, the, the, all the presentations will go on to either Google Drive or YouTube and we'll index them here so that you will be able to discover them from Trusted Space. All right. Thank you so much, Shabs, um, Maggie, and a special thanks again, 
um, to the Ajanas Firmiano for um, visiting our meetup today. And that's going to be the last piece uh, for, for today. As Chef uh, said, we're going to hang out here another couple of minutes. And Chef, if you share, if you want to share the link where people um, can go to, um, you know, check out the Trusted Place uh, community. Uh. So yeah, that's the link. Uh, so guys, uh, if you want uh, get logged in, if you have any questions, I'll be able to give you some, um, uh, you know, sessions. And Maggie is also here. But if not, you can also reach me by email afterwards. Uh, so I'll put my email also here on chat. Uh, and then happy to kind of uh, connect offline as well. All right. Thank you. Uh